you need to know and understand your wife's mood and her body. During pregnancy, she's not carrying a plague, she's not carrying a sickness, she is just pregnant. She can still do any and everything that every normal lady is gonna do. So if you want her on top, put her on top. Just don't put her under making a robust cabinet. <laughs> do safe positions. See, you should not do it. You see, cowgirl. Do it. You see, dog style. Doggy. Yeah, you see, doggy. Do it. Oh, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about all the good things we met like in this life. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl NK on Twitter, Nkira Arinza. You're welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Nkira Arinza. I'm a YouTuber based in Abuja, FC Nigeria. And on this channel, as usual, we rap. We talk fast. <laughs> we try to talk fast, but try to keep up. <laughs> guys, if you're new here, thank you so much for coming by my channel. Do well to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and comment. And if you're an OG, here my fellow unfiltered babe you're welcome back so on this on today's video from the topic you can tell we are talking about what sex sex in general for women women sex before pregnancy sex in pregnancy and sex after delivery these are the three stages of sex for women that men don't even know sex they think it's business as usual it is always different so if you if if you know this is the type of video you're going to enjoy do stay tuned and let's get right into it don't mind me i'm dimming because it's business <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. NK here, on Twitter NK, giving you everything. Was, 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 jig, 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 jig. This is everything, motherhood, everything, women, everything, girly. We give it to you all in one. So today's ch ch channel, you know now, if you're a mother, the feeling when you have sex the first time at the initial stage as a young girl is different when you're married. It is different when you're a baby. If you hear any dog back, please forgive me. This dog was after my life. This dog was after my life. But I will not stop this video because I have gone far. Just forgive me, please. Forgive me. So, the this is the second time I'm filming this video. Second time, and there was the same dog. I will not stop. So, if you, you every, every woman knows the sex when you had, when you had, I don't know. I don't know if it's in, if YouTube is going to censor my video when I'm saying sex, sex. Maybe I should find another word for it. The action, action. Let's just action. <laughs> the action when you are married. The action when you are single and you are is different from when you are married to when you've had the when you are pregnant to when you've had the baby. There are various stages. When you are young, it's exciting. You do it every day. You do the action every day whenever you want. It's like food, you're eating it, you're all you are you're happy. You like it. When you are married at the initial at the initial stage, it's like that. You get like hungry for each other. You cannot do a thing about anything when your man is back. You just want to be in your man's arms, call do and enjoy your life and have the action. When you get pregnant, some people it is different for them very different lots of people it is still the same thing and no two pregnancies are the same mind you now in my first pregnancy for example i was very very active in the action very active like i really wanted to do my tool i wanted to have my the feel of my husband that's all i wanted but in my second pregnancy i was more like not interested in it not interested so i'm telling you that you will see different stages and different types and pages of you in this motherhood journey <laughs> It will change you. It will change you. If you just have a high libido, chances are that you will not get a low libido. If you have a low libido, chances are you get a high libido. So now, in my first pregnancy, you know, I always see myself as a pet, pet project, as a pet rat. <laughs> in my first pregnancy, I was really sexually active because I've been around for a very long time. Mind you now, TMI. My when we got married, um, we had the whole year to enjoy ourselves we had time to do everything we had time no child no baby just us we're intentional about becoming parents even though still nothing prepares you for this parenthood nothing prepares you for that nothing prepares the men nothing prepares the women Try for men that are involved in the uh, in the grooming and the training of their kids so me now i'm not maternal yes i'm not maternal i am the outside girl, like take me outside. Like I don't really I'm not a model kind of person, but I'm learning, I'm trying, I have two kids now, but I'm not yet there yet. I believe I'm not there yet. So my first pregnancy, I only wanted to do my two because I was always getting happy. 
like I would get really wet. I wanted my husband, I wanted my man. It was a very beautiful feeling because he would take care of me, he would handle me, and I loved it. It was quite interesting to see because it was a part of me I had not seen. Yes, I loved being the company of my man. I loved being active in my action, but it was not, it was different my first pregnancy. It was like it was food to my ears, music to my ears, food to my stomach. <laughs> I loved it. And I realized, I stepped around the mouth and I realized that it's always sometimes it's better for women. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you were not active before. You can just go from zero to hundred. Your hormones can change you in a way that you cannot even imagine. Explain. So my hormones changed me from my first pregnancy. I was interested in my husband. I was always happy to do it. And mind you, medically they advise you to always be active with your man. They advise you because it helps open up whatever is going to open for childbirth. It helps you have that baby well it helps open up open up the service it helps your body very well it is medically proven yes if you want to induce labor it is proven that you have to do to induce labor most men don't even like touching their wife when they're pregnant i don't know why but it is the truth some men say it's irritating some men say they can die worried and going to hold their ribs some men say they don't find the woman they don't find the man attractive anymore. You know, some people just say they want to protect their baby some people just say ah how can they be doing the thing on their baby's head Various, you get to ask trouble, depends on this world. So, various and diverse opinions. My God, I'm a fine girl. Before we go any further, guys, I am a fine girl. Ha, this baby's not fine. Mr. Rinza, you marry Sha. You marry Sha. If you're watching this video, man, you marry. <laughs> so, um, I was really active and I asked questions. One thing about me is I'm going to ask a lot of questions. If you meet me for the first time, I might be very, very conserved with you and reserved with you. But when we get to know each other, when we start to, when we become friends, guy, I have no fears. I will ask you anything I want to ask you. If I want to know anything, I will ask you. And if you ask me, and if it's something that's within my powers to divulge, I will divulge it because I've learned to start having a filter. I didn't have filter before, hence, I didn't make your filter. But now I have been beginning to have filter. I'm bringing that some things are best left inside the mind <laughs> because they will use it against you. <laughs> it was like that for me. Now, I put up some questions and before not today. I've put up questions before and I've had various opinions about set and what that And I'm going to do that again on my Instagram. So if you're not following my Instagram, I'm following my Instagram because most of my videos here are snippets from my Instagram stories, from my Instagram questions. It's about what I will have a whole lot of motherhood community on my Instagram. So do well to come and engage us there. <laughs> so guys, I, I I had a different experience with my first pregnancy. So my second pregnancy, now after after delivery, my first baby, I to 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 go back to action was difficult. I had some kind of mental trauma because I had not experienced any kind of pain like that pain I experienced during delivery. I was traumatized because it was so scary. I I had prolonged labor and I, just the whole story. I I think I had that video somewhere on my Instagram, on my YouTube. You can check for it. My baby story, my first pregnancy, my second pregnancy. I've seen, I've spoken about it on here. So it, to get back and it was scary because I had a patient on me. I was stitched, so it was scary. Like, would you go there and open this wound again? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. It was very scary. But the truth was that I had healed. When I went to my six weeks check, the doctor was like, thank you. You are healed. And you have been cleared to go ahead and resume action. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. I don't feel all right here to start that. But he told me you are ready and with your, and your, and your own time can start it. My husband is a very gentle man. He's always about you. Whenever you are ready, whatever you want, whatever you want to do, it's fine by him. As long as it's what you're okay with. So I had to tell myself, if I leave this man, he will give me 10 years if I resume such activities. So I had to tell myself, you know what, it's time. You know when it's time. So when we after six weeks, like seven weeks we tried, I was still not, I tried, I was holding myself, but I'm like, we won't do it. So I, we stopped. By eight weeks, nine, I think we resumed at the ninth week. By the ninth week, he we did it again. And it was okay, I was receptive, I was receptive. I still did, I didn't know, I no longer felt like it was going to hurt me. I tried kept calm and told me, you know, let us try to do it. So this changes you. Some people never even come out of the trauma. It takes them months to have to interact with their husband. Yes, it takes them as long. I know someone that has, her baby is like nine months now and she has not resumed activities with her husband because she's traumatized. Now, me and Jans, we own that place trauma. Trauma is serious. The trauma of delivery is so serious that it can affect you from letting anybody or anything go down there. Imagine having to even go for your um, cervical cancer screening six weeks after delivery. You will still have to put something inside them 
to check the scriptures and the, to do the test. So we know, we know, we know the rest. <laughs> we know the rest. So most women have it different. Some women don't even want you to come close to them during pregnancy. Don't touch me. I don't want anything to do with you. I just want to have this baby and be done. And it's not it's not difficult. It is hormones. Your hormones can give a lot of things. My hormones made me hate my phone. My hormones made me hate my camera. My hormones made me hate phone calls. My hormones made, made me hate light. My hormones made me hate a lot of things. So your hormones can even make you hate intercourse with your man. Your hormones can even make you not even want to see the man. Your hormones can even make you not to want to do anything. Not to even want to watch it. Your hormones, see, the power of the hormones, we are underrated. The hormones are powerful. So I, I, I was like, you know what? Um, let us do as we know. We are done to do. We open the we paved way. We open the cage again. <laughs> we open the cage again, and huh, it was it was magical because I, there was no going back from there. Yeah, I said it. There was no going back from there because it didn't it didn't it didn't teach me anything extra. But I I, I felt rejuvenated. I felt a different kind of way. I wasn't having intercourse and feeling like oh something will go wrong because that first pregnancy I was feeling like oh. I think I should have not been careless. I should have supposed to be doing this thing. But the doctor told me, no, do whatever it is you want to do. You are free to have intercourse. You can do it. You are clear. You don't have any issues. Do it in the pregnancy. It's fine. So it was a relief to continue back to my normal routine of intercourse. But it changed me. I, I, I now like intercourse a little bit more. Yes, a little bit more. I had already now, at this point, I had also, also now learned my body. I was also now proud of my body. I was also now confident in my body and confident in me. So I was like, okay, when I, this is what I want, this is what I like. I don't like this, I like this. It, it, I don't know what I say, it made me mature, like, you know, what I like and what I do not like. Like, it, it gave me a voice. <laughs> if, if I'm to say so, it gave me a voice. Like, you say, okay, now I'm a woman. I know what I want. I have to say, oh, I don't like this. Don't do this. And I have to say, oh, I like this. Do this. So he gave me a voice and it really, really, it really brought me out more. And I went for the second generation I got pregnant. Yeah, I did not like intercourse anymore. Casey's pregnancy, I did not like intercourse. Don't touch me. Even if you touch me, it's when I have to be in the mood, like very seriously in the mood before you can touch me. So it was like anytime you want it. Don't touch me, don't near me. I don't want anything. If I if I want to have intercourse, it has to be when I want it. I have to be charged to want it. So I would be like, take your it's you, it's always about you. So it was really difficult for me, I will not lie, but I was able to still try to please my man because the truth is that he's my man and I want to please him. I don't know what you guys talk about, I don't know what you guys think, but he's my man and I want to please him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not about though I'm I'm the woman. I don't want to leave only me. You know, it's not just about you. It's about you and the man. You are both in this together. I also told myself in my mind, this is my man, and I also want to please him. I also want to satisfy him sexually. I also want to do my duties because he has done. He does his duties. Boy, does he do his duties? <laughs> he does his duties. Duty. So if you have a man that does his duties, to you try to do your duty too. Don't be one sided. Be nice to your man. <laughs> So I, I knew that this, I knew that I really want that. So the days that I knew want it, I didn't want it. The I wanted, I wanted it. So he gave me the dance to you know what when you're ready, when you want it, just come out and bring for you. Hi guys, yes, forgive me. Nigeria is happening to Nigeria is happening to all of us. So it was it was I don't know where I was, but I'll try to keep up. So it was very different to me from my first and my second pregnancy. But at the end of my coming to the end of my pregnancy, of my second pregnancy, I still want it, I still like it, I still been in the mood for it. So I was getting when I wanted it. So if it, it, it's all about you and to understand your body, you don't most women will say, I don't want it at all. Just try. Because it also helps you, it helps you, it helps release oxytocin to your body, it helps send signals to your brain, surely at the end then pass when you're almost due for delivery. Women actually need it. Unless the doctor says you should not do it, then don't do it. This will affect you, this will affect you, this will affect you, this, then don't do it. But if your doctor says you are clear, you can do whatever it is you want, you won't do it. Why are you, why are you being stingy to yourself? <laughs> so me, it was a whole volume altogether. After I had Casey, my returning back sexually because Casey gave me a lot of tears. But with coming back sexually, I had to go to make sure I was healed completely. When I went back for six weeks, I was healed, but they just told me to still take two weeks before I can resume intercourse. So I took I took my time for I resume intercourse again after Casey. I resume intercourse like maybe the twelfth week, like three months or more like that. But that was it. So most times we, we are quick to talk, we are quick to judge, men are quick to brush our, our feelings away. Men, these videos are also for you men, send these videos to your men. You need to know and understand your wife's mood and her body. 
during pregnancy, she's not carrying a plague, she's not carrying a sickness, she is just pregnant. She can still do any and everything that every normal lady is gonna do. So if you want her on top, put her on top. Just don't put her under making a robust habit. <laughs> I was, see, in pregnancy, I asked the medical physician, and girl, what are you styling? You can do any style you want to, as long as it's not dangerous for you. As long as you still feel safe, don't go and climb, don't go and um, uh, make them lie down in your stomach. Do safe positions, see missionary please. You see, cowgirl, do it. You see, dog style, doggy, yeah, you see, doggy, do it. All these styles are things you can do and explore in your pregnancy. If you're pregnant, you're not sick, you will be good to carry. Okay, now, no, you can but you can still have your action without harming the child. Don't go and do BDSM at there, don't go and do nonsense, just do the right thing where you're going to die, you're going to enjoy yourself and your man also enjoy yourself. Don't stab your man, men, don't stab your women. Action is an integral part of this our pregnancy journey, actually. Very integral, very integral, very important. We cannot overemphasize the importance of action pregnancy. And after pregnancy, men study your women's body. Women study your men's body. Don't be a local of women. So men are fond of when it's time to do action, just lie and break carelessly and do that thing. No. Explore your man's body. Let's explore your body too. For play. Enjoy yourselves, enjoy your body. Like, I can't even overemphasize, enjoy your body. Action is more than just penetration, it's not just penetration, guys. There are other things to do your neck, your arms, your body, your legs. Your oh, you have points that you don't even want to your fancy. Explore your body, learn your body, you mean, men, learn your body, learn your spouse's bodies too. You can't give what you don't have. If I learn my body here and tell you what I like, do what I like, don't do what it is you feel I like. I know what I want because most times our men cannot satisfy us because we can't even say what it is we like, we can't even say it because we are shy. See what you want when you are married, you know a stranger. You've seen yourself naked, what are you hiding? Do your thing. Do yourself. I enjoy myself very well doing that. I don't need that. And you should not hold that too. You should be able to climax. Yes. Well, not, it's not women that know how to climax. Women should be able to climax. So women that have told me that they have never orgasm in their life. And I'm like, what have you been doing? You never orgasm. You should orgasm. You should orgasm. Ah, you should orgasm the next time. I've said so much. Guys, let's leave the room for the next video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Remember to like my videos, comment on my videos, subscribe, and share my videos to your higher audience. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.